In this lesson, we're going to be modeling data with a curve of best fit. All the steps that we took to go through to model data with a line of best fit still hold true, but when you get to the menu, and you can see I've got a screenshot here, when you get to the menu where you're choosing what kind of regression you're doing, you're now choosing either a quadratic regression or a cubic regression, and you can see there's lots of different regressions. So you really have to analyze your scatter plot, see what kind of trend we can see there and what is going to be the best regression that will fit what we're doing. In this lesson we're looking at quadratic regression or a cubic regression. Let's take a look at example one. If 400 children attend an afternoon movie, the price of admission is 80 cents per ticket. For each 10 cents added to the price of admission, the attendance drops by 40 children. Here are some values based upon the information that for every 10 cents added to the ticket price, 40 fewer children would attend. So we can see our data uh, table. Price of tickets per cent is 80 cents, 90 cents, 100 cents, so that would be like a dollar, and a dollar ten. That's how much it costs per ticket. Number of people attending, which determines what you're charging there and then the income for the cinema. So how do they get that value? 80 times 400 gives you $320. 90 times 360 gives you $324 and so on. So you can see we've got that 10 cent increase and that dictates how many people are attending, right? More people who are attending, well not necessarily, right? So you charge more per ticket, less people show up, right? You charge even more, even less people show up. But how does that affect our income. Well, our income, 320, 324, but then back down to 320, 308. So before we even look any further, we can see that our data starts low, goes up, and then goes back down again. So what kind of function is that? Well, that to me would look like a quadratic, right? You're starting low, going high, and then coming back down, or at least that's one turning point in a cubic function if that was the case. But I can see here that this is going to be quadratic. Let's look at A. It says plot the data on a scatter plot. Put price of ticket into L1, so they're telling us that that's our X, and the income into L2, that's our Y. Price per ticket L1, and income into L2. So we're looking at the relationship between the price and the income. We could have also asked for the attending against the income. But if you look at the price of the tickets against the attending, that's just a linear function. You'll get a straight line graph, so we don't want to do that, okay? Because it says specifically, determine the equation of a quadratic regression function that models the data. So let's go ahead and put this in our calculator, choose quadratic regression, and see how a curve of best fit is very much the same as the process that we took to do the line of best fit. So remember, we're going into stat 1 in our calculator. will get us back to this menu and put our data points in. I'm going to give you a moment to go ahead and do that. All right, once you have your data in here, you can press zoom 9, and you can see that that's a curve, very much like a quadratic regression. So at this point, we're going to find out what that regression is. Stat, calc, I'm choosing 5, which is the quadratic regression. Enter, and there we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is negative 0 0.04, b is 7.2, and c is 0. Let's write this in on our notes. And you can put the plus 0 in at the end, but you don't have to. Okay. So there's our quadratic function. Now let's draw the curve of best fit in. So to do that, remember you go to y equals, make sure everything's cleared out in there. Vars 5 over to equation, enter, and then hit trace or graph, and there's our curve of best fit. Now if you take a look at our example again, on the next page here, it says, how many increases of 10 cents should the cinema add to the price in order to maximize the profits? When we see the word maximize or minimize, that's telling us to find the vertex. 
Okay, find the vertex. So let's go ahead and do that. So how do I find the vertex again? Second trace. In that, I can see number four is maximum, and this does have a maximum. I'm going to go to the left of my vertex. Enter. Go to the right. Enter. Oh, it's going further. And then enter again. And my vertex is at 324 for my y value and 89.99 repeated, or almost 99 repeated, or 90 if we want to round that for my x value. So let's put that in here. So the vertex is 90, I'm just rounding here, and 324. So what does that mean? Right? That means that we've got 90 cents, right? 90 cents gives us a maximum profit. Let's write this down. 90 cents gives a maximum profit of $324. So how many increases? Well, we started, if you look at your table on the previous page, the table started at 80 cents, so that's only one 10 cent increase. Make sure you're answering the questions that they're asking, right? So it says how many 10 cent increases? Well, this is one 10 cent increase. Now in this example, it was nice. Our vertex was actually on the table. You can see it right here. Um, in this line here, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes that value isn't given or it's in between that point and something else. This was a nice one so we can see that what we did actually match what was going on in the in the example. Let's take a look at example two. Now in example two it says a telephone company can get 800 subscribers at a monthly rate of $25 each. It will get 60 more subscribers for each dollar decrease in the rate. So what is this going to look like? Well, we can see our monthly rate, okay, going up by a dollar each time. Our subscribers are decreasing by 60, sorry, increasing by 60, and then we've got our gross monthly income. It says plot the data on a scatter plot, put monthly rate into L1 and income into L2. Determine the equation of the quadratic regression, so another quadratic regression that models the data. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to clear everything out. This y equals, make sure that's gone. Stat 1, remember go up and hit clear, enter. Do that for both of them. And take your time and carefully put in those values into L1 and L2. Now that we have this in here, let's go ahead and zoom 9. Now to me, this almost looks like it's linear, but they're telling me it's a regression function that's quadratic. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go into stat, calc. This is a quadratic regression, 5. Enter. And it gives me the equation. Let's write this down. So the equation is y equals negative 60x squared plus 2300x. Okay, so I'm going to draw this in to see what the regression function looks like. VARS 5 equation enter, trace, and that's part of my curve. Now if I want to see this a little bit better, I can go to zoom out, which is 3, and hit enter after you do that. Okay, well that's giving me a better idea of what's going on. If I want to zoom out again, three, enter, you can see, okay, so what are we graphing here? It says telephone company, and we've got on the bottom, right, on my x value, that's the monthly rate, and then on the y-axis, that's the gross monthly income. So our graph is just in that little top corner there, right? Even though that's, that's shown there. If you want to see the full graph, what I've done here is I've gone to y minimum and I put 0 and if you hit trace, now you can see, well if that starts at 0, what this is actually looking like.
Okay, so let's draw this graph. So it's starting here, going up, and coming back down. What is the vertex? Why do I want to figure that out? Well, it says what rate will yield a maximum gross monthly income, and what will this income be? So again, this is my monthly rate measured in dollars. And this is my gross monthly income. Also measured in dollars. And whenever you do any sort of sketch, you need at least one data point on there. And that data point is going to be our maximum. So second trace max, which is four. Left bound, enter, right bound. Enter, enter again, and there's my vertex. So let's put that on our graph here. Rounding, that's 19.17 for my x, and 22,041.67. I'm always rounding to two decimal places for money, but in general, that's what we are always rounding to unless told otherwise. So what does that mean? It says what rate will yield a maximum gross monthly income and what will this income be? Well, the monthly rate is $19.17 and the maximum income they will receive is that $22,041.67. So that's two examples on how to do quadratic regressions. Let's try to do example three, which is going to give us a cubic regression. Now for this cubic regression, you've got a lot more data points to put on our graphing calculator, so take your time doing that. This is L1, L2, this is L1 continued. So just keep going with L1, and this is L2 continued. They just did that so that they didn't have to use a whole lot of space. They put it sideways. So once you're putting in 1 through 14, continue with 17 to 29 in the same L1. So what is this example even asking us? It says the following table shows the average retail price of gasoline per liter for a selection of years in a 30 year period beginning in 1979. So we can see years after 1979. So when, when they say zero, that is 1979. When they say year one, that's actually 1980. Year two, 1981 and so on and it doesn't go it goes 1 2 3 4 7 8 9 12 14 it's not all in order but like 20 means 20 years after 1979 so that would be year 1999 so when you're figuring this out make sure you keep that in mind a use technology to graph the data as a scatter plot what polynomial function could be used to model the data and explain why i kind of gave it away already but let's see why this is true if you read B, it would give it away too. It's a cubic regression. On your test, on your exam, you're going to have to identify what it is. It's not always going to be given to you. All right, let's clear out what we have here for our quadratic. Stat one. Clear that out. And now we're at a point where we can put in that data. Go ahead, take your time and do that and then come back to the video. Now that you have all the data in here, Zoom 9, and you can see here, you can see the curve, and you can see that it's, hopefully you can see, that it's a cubic function, right? It's S-shaped, and it has two turns in there. Let's find the cubic regression equation. Before we do that, just put in your notes here. It says use technology. What polynomial function could it be? And we're saying it's cubic because it is S-shaped and has two turns. All right, let's get the equation. So we're going to go back into our stat menu, calc, and now you're finding cubic regression, which is 6. So there's our equation. Let's write that down. 
So for B, determine the regression equation. Our equation becomes y equals 0.0123x cubed minus 0.4645x squared plus 6.295x plus 23.452. Now it says use that to estimate the average grass price in 1984 and 1985 and then estimate the year in which the average price of gas was 56 cents per liter. So let's go ahead here, let's put in our equation, VARS 5, enter, and we can hit trace and then that's going to trace through. And now we have that in here, and we can use our trace function. Now, remember, we said at the beginning, these are the years after 1979. So, for 1984, we've got x is equal to 5, and for 1985, x is equal to 6. Okay, so if we put that in here, second trace zero, sorry, second trace value. Mister. Put in the value of five here and hit enter and you get 44.85. And if we do this again, second trace value and put in a value of six, enter, you get 47.15. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So for 1984, the price would be 44.9 cents per liter and for 1985 we would have 47.2 cents per liter. For C, estimate the year in which the average price of gas was 56 cents per liter. Well in this case now we're going the opposite. We're going to put the 56 in here under Y2. And if you hit trace you can see we're going to get our horizontal line. So in this case, we're going second trace intersect, five, enter, enter, enter. And it would be for a Y value, 56 cents per liter. So that's 16.46 years after 1979. So what year would that be? So in C, we put in Y is equal to 56. We got a corresponding value for X when we did second trace intersect. We got a corresponding value of 16.49. So if we take 1979 and add 16.49, we get 1995.49, which means the year would be 1995. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for joining me.